YouTube. Today, we've got an issue. This is the recoil starting starter rope. It's called a recoil starter. Uh, off of my old, uh, you guys might remember my old uh, edger. It's the 1972. I sold the 73. But, we've got an issue here. Let's see if we can fix that thing. Okay guys, here's what happened. Uh, this rope is tangled up down in here. So if I can get you in there. Right down in there. It's all tangled up. See, it's kind of right there. So, what we're going to do, I don't think I'll put a new rope in it, but if I do, I've got this stuff here I want to use. But, take this rope out. we got to get down in here. And pull this out just like that. Yeah, just like that. Okay, that's your handle. Now, I'm just going to cut that off because I ain't trying to, that knot's been in there probably since 72. So, just going to cut that rope off for now. Try not to cut myself on them blood thinners now, man. If I so much as get scratched, I'm in deep doo doo. Now, usually, this thing you have to be careful when you're doing that because these things will spin around and around and around because there's a big spring in there, and I'll be showing that to you here in a minute. Um, we may have to bend these back. And if we do, that spring can come flying out, so we got to be real careful. Um, right now. Okay, looks like that's what we're going to have to do. So I'm just going to take a screwdriver and get inside of here. And I'm going to bend them back. Just a little bit. I don't want it flying clear out. These cold springs are, they are a pain. When they come flying out, they're not hard to, they're not really that hard to, uh, well, I don't think. A lot of guys have trouble with them. I don't think they're that hard to put back in, but like I said, a lot of guys, man, they struggle. Um, looks like this might be worn here a little bit. Let's see if we can get that rope on the other side, just like that. See, now we can maybe get in here and get a hold of that. Try to pull it. This thing looks pretty worn. I should take it out and uh, check the spring, but I don't know if I want to do all that either. me this is the hardest part dealing with these ropes you know if we can run this out a little bit more okay. see how that's wanting to flop up out of there be careful with it which I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out and uh, hope it don't bite me, right? I 
I'll see if I can show you that spring here in just a second. Just a big flat piece of metal. See it down in there? See it wanting to come out? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this rope. See, it's getting ready to break right there anyhow, this rope is. So, try to take this out here. I'm going to go ahead and cut that so I don't forget. Gonna take this knot out of here. Not snot, not. Now I'm try to bring that back a little bit. Seems to be a little rusty. Let's go ahead and pull it out and clean it up. There you go. There's the spring. Need to inspect it anyway. Uh huh. There we go. Alright, let's clean this all up. Needs cleaned anyway. Scrape all this out. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and run some sandpaper over that. Uh, you can use grease, but grease, remember, picks up a lot of dirt. This thing's going to be out in a lot of dirt if it's ever used. I mean, I don't know if somebody's going to use it. I will sell it. Um, but uh, if somebody buys it, they'll probably, what they're doing down here in Florida, they're building uh, motorized bicycles. They're putting these little motors on bicycles. That's what the other guy, he bought one of them Harley Davidson three wheel bicycles with the big tires on it and stuff. And that's what he bought my other one for was the motor off of it. And uh, the motor that I sold, just the two and two horsepower Briggs, uh, that white one, I sold it. And he also was going to do the same thing. He's going to put it on a motorized bicycle. So I figure that's probably the fate of this one kind of a shame to have these you know these tillers or not tillers but these edgers sitting around you know and nobody using them really <laughs> uh, because there's no motors on them but hell you got edgers now that uh, I got one right over there for sale it's just like a weed eater attachment you know it's just it's real small uh, it's light don't take up much sp space to haul them around so I'm sure sometimes these get a little crack in them right in there but, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed you up while I scrape all this off well, in fact, you know what? I'll just I'll just come back with you once I get all this old grease and grime. That's what it is. Uh, old lubricant. Once I get all this cleaned up, you get the idea. I mean, once I get this cleaned up, I'll come back with you. And we'll lube this up. I'll probably just use a little bit of this transmission fluid I've got here. Because it don't take a lot. Um... The spring doesn't look too bad. Usually they'll break right here or right here. I have fixed them before. But this one seems to be okay. So that's what I'm going to do, guys. Uh, let me get back with you here in just a minute.
Okay guys, we're back. I cleaned most of this off. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen to this. Somebody's going to buy it just to uh, put it on a motorized bicycle. So I'm not, I'm not getting this real, you know, I'm not doing a real, I mean, because th these guys take these things apart and they'll paint them the same color they're painting their bikes or whatever. So, somebody will probably end up taking this off and painting it and sanding it down, painting it to match this bike and stuff like that. So, I'm not getting too concerned about this outer edge. I mainly was concerned about that. So, I got that. What I did was I cut me a, a length of rope. I used the old one there as a... to kind of tell how and then I went a few inches longer because um, you know in order to tie my handle on and to tie the knot to hold it on to the spool so this is all I'm going to do I'm just going to put just a little bit of just a little bit of training fluid on there just give it some lubricant Probably a little bit too much. We'll dab some out of there. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the spring back in. See, there's this end right here. Now it's going to go down into that hole right there. Alright, so what we're going to do. get this kind of wrapped up a little bit by hand first don't get frustrated with this because they will snap out on you every once in a while and so this all you do is you put it in here like this and then turn it now this is the hard part see it keeps wanting to come out this is the hard part so I'm going to keep making it smaller so I can get it to fit down in there better Uh, what you can do, I've done this before, when I get them real finicky, I may have to this time. A lot of times I'll put something around here to keep it from flying out so bad. But uh, I sh shouldn't have to. If I can get, see, that's how that goes, like that. stuff down in there all right see that's locked into position there can you see that okay so I'm just gonna let it loose real easy just like that now we're gonna bend these back over try not to break that piece of plastic well not really plastic plastic uh, it's called a nylon and just push that down like that a lot of times these tabs will break off but they give you two extra because they know that's just going to happen so you just take that straighten that tab out put that pe that uh what do you call it i just sent it nylon onto that one bend it over and then bend it down uh looks like it may have cracked on me i don't know uh I think it's going to be okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is going to wind backwards, counterclockwise, like this. Okay. Now there's a hole right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it around at least one turn. Okay. All right. Well, let's go two turns. All right. So I'm going to bring it around two turns. And I'm going to take my end now. 
once I cut this off, I just took, uh, shoot, no, I gotta, I gotta wind this whole thing up, never mind, anyway, once I took this off, or cut it off, I just took my, uh, lighter, and kind of melted the end and made it so it doesn't fray out. So what we're going to have to do is we got to wind this. We're going to wind it as much as we can. All right. I used to have a tool, like a handle that I could wind this that I made. Of course, all that was up in Ohio. So I'm going to wind it up pretty tight. And that's as tight as it'll go right there. Okay. Alright. Now I'm going to stick my rope through there. What you can do is you can put a clamp, if you've got a C-clamp, which I don't have one, in here to hold that from, from spinning on you jam something in there sometimes that works but you have see you still have to be real careful see still want to go but it does help so we're gonna put we're gonna put this string in through there and we've got to get it up and out that hole right there that right by my thumb now what you can do is you can put it on a piece of wire and pull it up through if you got a thin piece of wire, mechanics wire, or something like that. Um, I may have to back it off a turn just to get it to line up better. Which I think is what I want to do. Alright. Line that up just like that. You're finicky, guys. This is not, I mean, it's not hard if you got the patience, but if you if you don't have patience for this kind of thing, you ain't gonna make it. Sometimes you can go down through here. That's why I haven't put the handle on yet. And you can bring it out. See it coming out down here. See it right down there. And you can shove it through. Sometimes just whatever works for you. It's starting to come out that hole right there. See it down in there? Let's keep shoving it through now. I'm going to use my little needle nose. And it won't fit. I should have got my smaller ones. And you can shove them up through there. If I can jam that in there, maybe it'll stay. See, it happens. Let me get my smaller needle nose. these they're not the ones I wanted but they might work here we go let's wrap it up again sorry I keep hitting the camera I got you down kind of low so you can maybe see a little better. <clears throat> Let's try that. I got you also up on this end so maybe you can see a little bit better. There we go. And it should be coming out the other side. There it is, see it? Right there. Pull it in a little bit. Now, 
this is where that C clamp would come in handy because I got to tie a couple knots on this so it doesn't go through the hole. Yes, this rope is a little bit smaller, but it's strong. This rope is actually rope from uh, uh, window blinds. From an old set of window blinds. I don't throw this stuff away. I got some in the back of the truck for tying down stuff that we may have to haul. I've got this was in my toolbox. Now let's go ahead and pull this out and make sure that knot's gonna be whoops, gonna be big enough without pulling through. I think it'll be alright. Now we're gonna let it come back real slow. Okay, now we're going to tie our T-handle back on. This goes up through here like this. Pull it out a little bit. I'm just going to tie, there's no special knot guys, if you can tie a knot you can do this. We're not talking about square knots and sailor knots and boy scout knots. I mean, I tie a knot if it works and it holds, it holds, you know. Uh, now we're going to bring this up through here, about center of your little rod there. If you lose this, don't be alarmed. Get your nail, get your, you know, steel dowel rod or something. It'll work just fine. Make sure it's steel now. So it doesn't bend, but and there we go. Now let's see. There we go. I'm gonna try to, like to cut that little piece off. I don't have to, but I hate using a knife. Oops, sorry. I hate using a knife on this stuff. I'm afraid I'm going to cut myself now. Alright, now we're just going to take our lighter. Kind of mold it there a little bit. That knife, that knot is not coming out. Restring of Briggs and Stratton. Well, like, uh, oh, I still don't feel good, sorry. Like, uh, Tecumseh may be a little different. It's all on the same basis. These Briggs and Stratton, that's how you do a Briggs and Stratton from, you know, two horsepower on up to, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? Send these over too, just for extra. I don't like doing that. So, but I'm going to put a little bit of, a little bit of fluid just around here because it does rub on them things you know so Oops. Oops. make sure this one's down like that make sure this one's down like that we'll give it a couple pulls go something don't do that like when you start it don't just go don't do that they're not made to do that bring it back so we're good to go it's in good shape guys now we're going to put it back on the on the uh, edger not in this video this is just how to restring this thing or the same way if you put a new spring in it just add that step. You're just putting a new spring in. Make sure you get it, you know, to where it's going to wind up. You know what I mean? Counterclockwise. You see, when you pull that, it turns it counterclockwise. See that? And when you release it, it turns clockwise. So, so that's all you got to remember. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Remember, Shea Bear, the myth, the man, legend. Gone for now. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks for watching.